need to, I need to quickly transition to an awesome guy. His name is Nathan McPherson. Nathan McPherson is a second generational, constitutional, and he, he beats the IRS. He's a, a tax attorney, second second generation, I said, and uh, he's volunteering his time. He's been traveling around the state with me on his own expenses. And I really just want to say, you guys, this guy is awesome, and we're really, really fortunate to have him. So please welcome Nathan McPherson. Thank you. I'd like to shortly revisit the question why we're here. We've heard some of the concerns, data protection, concerns for our children, their future, their education. And remember the overarching question, what is the purpose of education? Keep that in your mind as we go through this. Why I'm here, uh, that's my father. I'm a second generation tax defense attorney, as she said. And my father started the law firm I'm now taking over, so I'm carrying on the baton in that respect. And also my mother, when I was a small child, was fighting the infiltration of communism and secular humanism into the school system in Arizona about 35 years ago. Her parents were both public school educators, and my mother has a degree in elementary education with a minor in special education. Uh, my brother is history department chair of Bethany Lutheran College in Minnesota, and was recently nominated for the presidency of another college. Uh, so education runs deep in my family. I'm also here, of course, because of my children and their futures, and uh, especially for my grandchildren, that they might be born into a constitutional republic and not into communism. And of course, thank you. And of course, uh, it's my duty to our creator to proclaim the truth, as we'll see in the Declaration of Independence, uh, the source of our rights. Overall, we could sum this up that we are all here to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, which is, of course, the purpose of our Constitution. Well, as we've seen a little bit, and we'll see more in depth. The Common Core is violating the Constitution, both the U.S. Constitution and the state Constitution. Uh, violates federal and state laws. The representative mentioned the law passed a year ago in Alaska, a state law prohibiting fee from spending money on Common Core. Now we have these tests coming up that aren't free, obviously, and are mandated, as we saw, but from the federal government, the Common Core tests. That right there appears to violate that state law, not to mention all the other expenses being paid. Uh, to implement Common Core in Alaska. And not only does it violate these things, but it is subverting the Constitution. Anybody want to define the word subvert? What does it mean to subvert the Constitution? Yes, sir. Undermining, correct. And also usurping parental rights and state rights. As we'll see, the Supreme Court has held, U.S. Congress has held, that the right or the duty, I should say, to educate children lies first and foremost with the parents. The states then have a role to support the parents. The federal government has a very limited role, if any role, that's even debated. So, to take a step back, why does the Constitution matter? I'm gonna talk about this violating and undermining the Constitution. Who cares? Does anybody in here care? Okay, y'all do. And anybody who's seen my presentations or knows the answer. What's in my hand here? Water bottle, okay. So what do I want? I want to keep the plastic, I want this label, and I want the water, right? So why, why am I holding a piece of plastic then, actually? Because it's the container for the water, right? If I don't have this plastic around it, I don't have any water. The water would be on the floor and useless, right? So this bottle provides the context that makes the content, the water inside, useful. Without the plastic around it, I don't have any water, I can't drink the water. That's the same thing with our Constitution. It provides the structure, the due process, to secure our freedom. Without the Constitution, we don't even have a country, because the Constitution is the document that created the United States of America. The Alaska State Constitution created the state of Alaska. Without the Constitution, we don't have anything. We especially don't have liberty. Well, our federal constitution sets up a republic of the United States. So this here, this case, the Supreme Court case, 
talked about separation of two spheres. Any guesses as to these two spheres? What are the two spheres? Yes, the, the state and the federal government. <coughs> protections of liberty. Again, the Constitution, structural protections of liberty. Well, like I mentioned, here's a laundry list of all of the different aspects of the US Constitution violated by the Common Core, state constitution, federal law, and state law. But don't take my word for it. Uh, you have one of the handouts here is the federal lawsuit where Governor Jindal of Louisiana, on behalf of the state, sued the U.S. Department of Education and the Secretary Arne Duncan, alleging these exact violations that I'm presenting here today. These two gentlemen were the general counsel and deputy general counsel of the U.S. Department of Education under Bush II. They wrote a white paper, the title there, saying exactly this, that Common Core is federal executive tyranny, violates the Constitution, violates federal statutes written by U.S. Congress, and is usurping our Tenth Amendment rights, just the same allegations the governor raised in his lawsuit. And this third case was actually brought by parents in Missouri, and it was just decided about a month ago that held part of the Common Core unconstitutional and in violation of federal and Missouri state law. And that aspect that was held already by a court to be unconstitutional in violation of law is SBAT, Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. And you'll recall a few moments ago, Representative Reinhold said that Governor Parnell and Commissioner Hanley got Alaska into SBAT, this organization, this consortium that was just held unconstitutional. And now we're not in that, we're in a very similar thing with the University of Kansas. So on to the 10th Amendment. Everybody remember what the 10th Amendment guarantees? <laughs> that whatever powers we the people do not specifically delegate to the federal government are reserved to us and to the states. Well, President Jefferson, uh, the major author of the Declaration of Independence, who had a lot of input into the Bill of Rights and the rest of the Constitution, was a big proponent of public education, as many in here, I'm sure are. But he said when he was president, he was speaking to the House and Senate of the US, it's a great thing, public education, but we'd have to do what if we, the federal government, wanted to do something about it? Have to amend the Constitution, because it's not in there. They don't have the authority. And US Congress even agreed with him in the 1960s, 1965 with the two statutes on education and in 1979 on the Department of Education Organizing Act that created the US Department of Education, which is a bit ironic that the US Congress says, we don't have anything to do with education, that's why we're creating the US Department of Education. But in any event, <laughs> right? Specifically, they said these standards, yeah. curriculum assessments, those even with these laws about education, we still don't have authority over that. And the Supreme Court has made clear what? That they can do it anyway? They may not compel the state. Now what does that mean to compel the state? To push it on them, say, if you want our money, you're going to do what we say. There are several Supreme Court cases that say this, starting back in the 1920s and going through. This is a more recent one, 97. Anybody recognize that guy's kind of hard to see here? Sheriff Mack, he was up here about a year ago. Anybody seen him talk, Sheriff Richard Mack? Yeah, he did. Uh, he sued the Clinton administration, as, as, along with the Prince, who was a sheriff from Montana, Sheriff Mack from my home state of Arizona, where I was born. Uh, when they tried to, the federal government tried to have uh, the sheriffs and local law enforcement implement the Brady Bill on the background check before buying guns, they took it up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, no, federal government, you can't do that. You can't hijack the state executive and make them do what you want. Well, who in the state is implementing Common Core? Because it's not federal agents in our schools, right? So who's doing it here? And it's not Representative Reinhold's not. The legislature passed a law banning the Common Core, right? It's the state executive, isn't it? But maybe the state executive wanted to agree to it and said, hey, this is a great thing, Common Core, 
By the way, are we doing common core in Alaska? Yes, so you all have been convinced by probably by the letter that our Commissioner of Education wrote to the U.S. Department of Education saying we are? Okay. Pretty convinced, yeah. So maybe maybe the Department of Education thinks Common Core is really great. So even though we know that the federal government can't force us to do it, we think it's good for the kids, so let's do it anyway. Is that okay? What what are the red letters there? Cannot be ratified by the consent of state officials. They don't have the authority to do that. So even if the state executive thinks it's a really good thing, they want to do it, they don't have the authority to. Now why is that? Again, the federal government can't do it because of the power reserved to the states. The state may not agree to it because the Tenth Amendment protects our rights. We the people have Tenth Amendment rights. We the people have standing to sue in court to enforce these rights. These rights belong to us, the people, not to the state, not to the federal government, to the people. On to the Compacts Clause. Anybody here heard of the Compacts Clause before all this? I didn't remember it, and I'm a constitutional lawyer. Well, I'm glad they put that in there. Well, what the Compacts Clause is, in a nutshell, is the states may not agree with one another uh, enter into contracts without the consent of U.S. Congress. Now, why is that? The federal constitution says the states are coming together to form a republic of the United States. Now, if a couple of states get together and make their own little agreements, and then maybe the, you know, the Northwest states will agree on something, the Southeast states and the Northeast, then all of a sudden we don't have one constitutional republic of 50 United States. We'll have a couple little clusters. We ran into that problem in the 1800s. So that's why that's in there. Well, it's a good thing for Common Core, or for the people respecting Common Core as well, because that's uh, what SBAC was held to violate, that provision of the Constitution. Again, U.S. Congress didn't approve Common Core. U.S. Congress didn't approve uh, these consortia. U.S. Congress, in fact, passed three laws that says the federal government doesn't have anything to do with this. It's once again executive tyranny, both at the federal level and at the state level, because remember, the Alaska legislature also prohibited spending on Common Core, and yet the Alaska state executive is spending money on Common Core. One of the big things concerning parents, especially starting this coming week, is the data mining. And many people will remember the Fourth Amendment protects our privacy rights. You have to have a search warrant, stuff like that, right? What about the Third Amendment? Anybody remember what's in the Third Amendment to the U.S. Constitution? Quartering of troops. And why don't we want to have troops quartered in our houses? Is it because it costs a lot to feed them or something? We don't have enough beds? We can't do anything, right? What if when you're having breakfast or dinner with your family, you have an armed government agent at the table? How's that dinner table conversation work? <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna speak, you're not gonna be talking about how you don't like Common Core, are you? Okay, so what if your child goes to a school with armed guards? I don't know if Alaska has those, but other states, I heard Michigan, you got those metal detectors. I met a guy on the ferry. And then, Little Johnny or Susie, given this test, how old were you when you first held a gun? How many guns do your parents have? What's in your medicine cabinet at home? Do your parents use drugs? Do they drink? Sounds like the same thing, doesn't it? Well, the Secretary of Education wants to build a system, and he actually already has, now to track Little Johnny all the way up to his earnings on as an adult. So. I've got my transcripts before. Anybody in here ever gotten your transcripts from your school? And when you got those, did it say how much you made every year since you graduated? Why not? They don't collect that. Well, they didn't used to, right? So that's what he wants to collect. So how are they going to do that? What did we just say? This data system in Alaska is based on which data system now? Permanent fund dividend that has your social security number, right? that sends you a 1099, sends one to the IRS as well, to tell them how much PFD you got. 
Well, as a tax attorney, I, of course, follow the Commissioner of Internal Revenue and the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. I was partnering with whom? Besides the states and various federal and state agencies, international governments. For what purpose? Data, exchange data, share information, data collection. Now, does it start to make sense here how that's going to work? So, okay, of course, the domestically, now we see the permanent fund dividend that sends your, in, your income information to the IRS is now also leaking your school information. So now we see how Secretary of Education can track what classes you took, what grades you got, how much you're making now as an adult. But the international aspect is a little bit interesting. So this came out right before my uh, speech in, the, in Fairbanks and Gulf Junction. This international data exchange program. So it's pursuant to, you, uh, to international treaty. Now, we have treaties with different governments on exchanging data. And then, of course, this is the UN, United Nations Independent Expert Advisory Group. United Nations. No one should be invisible. This is the world we want, a world that counts, where everybody is registered. And in fact, we have about 15 years left before they want their proof, legal proof of registration of all individuals. Anybody in here have home births? Did you have the government agent right there documenting that? You came up to Alaska so that the United Nations could track you, right? Is it starting to come together here with this? How all of this data exchange and tracking, why these tests are so important for these people? Because, hey, they're implementing these international treaties. Uh, there are also some First Amendment U.S. Constitution religious freedom concerns. Anybody recognize that church? It's not too far away from here. Anybody, any, anything? Yes, great job, the military. Uh, the common core is aligned with humanism, which the Supreme Court and the circuit courts have held to be a religion for purposes of the First Amendment religious freedom, and is promoting humanism, which you'll see in the handouts. Some of the interesting aspects are, it's our duty to obey just laws. So what do we do if the laws aren't just? Apparently we disobey them, I guess. Now, that's a, there's a big difference from obeying a just law or disobeying law you consider un, injustice and refusing a test because it violates your constitutional rights and is therefore unconstitutional. And the Supreme Court says because it's violating the Tenth Amendment, it's null and void. There's a big difference between these two things. I just know oh, I don't feel like obeying that law, which is promoted by the humanism that's in the Common Core, versus saying, hey, the Supreme Court has said the government may not do this, and anything they try to implement to do this is null and void. Huge difference. One is rule of law. One is lawlessness. And what we're seeing is lawlessness on behalf of the executive branches of both the federal and state governments versus the rule of law. And as John Adams said and wrote in the Massachusetts Constitution, we are a nation of laws and not of men. Our Constitution guarantees us due process. The only way that we have liberty is by following the rule of law and the due process. And that's not being done now by certain government actors. Well, under the Constitution, the Alaska State Legislature has a duty to establish and maintain a system of public schools. And we see now that the U.S. Department of Education wants to shut down certain schools if they don't meet their policies and so forth. That's, again, not following the rule of law. It's the state legislature's duty to establish and maintain. So what about curriculum. Should the state legislature then say we're going to use these textbooks in the schools here in Anchorage and Eagle River and Matsu? What did President Jefferson say about that? Remember the Constitution says the legislature of the state must establish and maintain a system of public schools. And my understanding is that all 50 states have constitutions that have a similar provision. Does that mean that the state legislature is writing the curriculum? 
and they're also running our businesses, right? No, even Jefferson said it's the parents within each ward. Because you remember the Supreme Court has held, and U.S. Congress has passed three laws that say it's the parents' responsibility to educate their children, and the states should help them. This is the Supreme Court case. In this one, it was after World War I, the legislature wanted to outlaw the teaching of German in schools. It went up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, no, the children have a right to learn what they want to learn. The teachers have the right to teach according to their conscience, so to speak. And the, the parents have the power to control the children's education. So again, local control, local control. The parents whose kids are in the school should be dictating what and how is taught in those schools. Because nobody cares more about your child than you do, right? So remember the word subversive again. We've seen all these violations where it's basically against the law or against the Constitution to do this. But how about the subversion? And remember, without the Constitution, we don't have what? Freedom and also, where are we? Liberty, freedom. But where are we if we don't have a Constitution? Just on some yeah. dirt somewhere, right? You know, UN territory. Maybe. Not Alaska, not the United States of America, without those two constitutions. Because again, the Constitution creates the government. Just like if you don't have articles of incorporation, you don't have a corporation, right? For your LLC, you have to organize with articles of organization. Otherwise, you can't touch your LLC or your corporation, can you? You only have that piece of paper. Same thing, we can't really touch the United States of America. What makes this dirt Alaska and USA the two constitutions? So anybody who attacks the Constitution is attacking what? The country. Well, it's good to know that the Second Amendment gives certain people. Anybody here in the militia, by the way? Okay, so nobody in here has any guns, apparently. That's what's taught in Common Core Line curriculum. What does the Supreme Court say? Do they agree with it? Citizens, it's an individual right, and it's granted by the Constitution? No, it's guaranteed by the Constitution, or protected by the Constitution. It's a big difference. So, the supreme law of the land, as interpreted by the Supreme Court of the land, says one thing. The Common Core Line curriculum says something way different. That seems pretty lawless to teach something that is the opposite of what our highest court has said. This comes from New York State Common Core Online curriculum. So if anybody here actually made his mortgage or rent payment and bought the clothes he's wearing, I don't know why, because you have a human right to that stuff. So you don't have to go out and work for it. That's what they're saying here. United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights taught in our public schools under Common Core Online curriculum. And you can even participate if you're in an Alaska school or <clears throat> any other state. You can participate in the model United Nations learn to wear the blue helmet from the world. And if you go onto that website that describes the Mali United Nations, they talk about how they promote world peace and everything. It's been along a lot, around a lot longer than I've been around. It started right after World War II. How's the world peace been since World War II? <laughs> and again, contrast that to our uh, first organic document. Remember, the U.S. Congress declared that the Declaration of Independence is our first organic document that creates our country. And it says we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not a piece of paper, not the United Nations. And why do we even have government? Why did we then have the first the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution? What's the purpose of government? To secure these rights. Not to give us rights but rather to secure the rights we already have. So remember the question at the beginning, what is the purpose of education? Because there's a, a huge worldview issue going on. The promoters of the Common Core have a certain worldview. We've seen some of the reflections of their United Nations philosophy, that they're going to give us rights to health care and housing and food in exchange for our submission to their will. 
versus our creator giving us rights and us organizing a government to secure those rights. Well, if John Adams were in the room today, what would he say? Would he be promoting the common core? He'd be freaking out. <laughs> Principles of freedom. Interesting. How do you learn principles of freedom by studying the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or by studying the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Which one promotes freedom? How about Noah Webster? Anybody know who Noah Webster is? Webster's Dictionary. Yeah, he's very good that you know that. Excellent. Uh, he's the father of traditional American education, the first, the early American education, Blue Dice Spell, the Dictionary of American English. Why did we have American English versus, you know, we had the Oxford English Dictionary already, right? What's the difference? We, we, we saw rigor, stuff like that, how, how there are different definitions, right? Well, if you're under a monarchy, a lord means something quite different than it does to an American, right? Words mean a different thing depending on your world and depending on your form of government. This, this last one is quite important, I think. One of the things, so virtue and liberty again. Inviolable attachment to world government. Or our own country. Remember, love your neighbor as yourself. Who's your neighbor? Your nearest neighbor is your wife, your kids, your husband if you're the wife, your family, then your community, right? Your own country. We are all neighbors here. We live in the Anchorage area. And again, why was Jefferson in favor of universal education? To promote liberty, right? If you don't have citizens who understand their rights, their duties, because remember, every right is a duty. Your right to free speech is actually your duty to control your tongue, to speak the truth, to not use your tongue to harm people, right? So if everybody is raised to know their rights and their duties, Society works a lot better, doesn't it? And without the education, liberty can't be universal. Contrast this now to the view of the federal executive, U.S. Department of Education. Remember, this guy was in charge of the Chicago school system before he became the head of the U.S. Department of Education. Same people who came out to the Arizona schools when I was a little child and started changing the schools in Arizona. They were from Chicago. They were moved out to Arizona to infiltrate the schools in Arizona. Now we have them at the federal executive. What does he say education is about? Liberty, knowing your rights, knowing your duties. What sticks out with that? Workforce, economy. It's all about money, because we know that the more money you make, the happier you are, right? That's the goal in life, is to get really rich. <laughs> Spent on zero for what, five now, or ten, I don't know. Every time I say that, I can't get anybody to agree. Gee, I don't know. How does he, go, how does he get people to agree with that? <laughs> and besides, it's about more than education, though. It's about social justice, all right? So anybody whose house is worth more than a certain amount, you better you know, start giving away your rooms for free to other people. Anybody have more than one car? We'll let you leave your keys here so we can distribute to people who don't have a car. That's social justice, right? Everybody should have the same. And remember, if everybody should have the same, where does the tide even out? Does the tide even out at high tide? Yeah. And where is the United States compared to the rest of the world? Well, we've been high, right? And now that's why we have to come down. Which uh, or Dr. Milgram, when he spoke in Anchorage back in December, he said the purpose of these math standards is his conclusion. Remember, these math standards are the common core that after four years, the students have irreparable harm. The purpose is to bring down America and thereby bring up the rest of the world. To, to find that common ground. The common ground is beneath us, isn't it? And this data, as we saw earlier, it doesn't lie. It doesn't tell the whole truth, okay? But it doesn't lie. It's going to be used to shut down schools. So what can we do? What can we do? Those are my kids. You know. Well, we know that just as in the history of 
our country. Friends are raised up. They all fight the battle, you know. Representative and I have been going around. We met at another event in the Matsu earlier. And how did we even get this bingo hall, right? Just people popping out of the woodwork stand up. And the number one thing is to proclaim the truth. Just use this information, pass it along. And another thing is to take control of your local government by helping your local government officials, again, helping them, working with them to do what's right. And I think the representative will have some more words to say about that. So I'll end with this. Let you all read that slide. We are the descendants of Alvin Patrick Henry here is speaking. If we're going to be worthy of the name of Americans, we're going to pass down this history to our children, right? And not let it just vanish. Shame on us if our grandchildren are born into communism. So may we, the people, prove ourselves worthy of the name of America.
Um, do the private schools have to follow common core like the Catholic uh, schools and Equifax Temple? And Most of them are at this point. They don't have to, but unfortunately that's one of the things I'm working on. Uh, more than half of the Catholic schools, which is the largest parochial school system in the country, the Catholic diocese, more than half have adopted Common Core. The second largest is Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. They are adopting Common Core. The third largest is Wisconsin Evangelicalism Synod. I attended that as a kid. Apparently it wasn't good enough when I went, because now they're adopting the Common Core. That's one of the things that really is, gets me angry. The school I attended is now going Common Core. It's, it's outrageous. How about the Baptists? I'm not sure where the Baptists are. Um, another question. With all this um, information of, of privacy, will they be able to get into the medical records of the students and families? I would imagine so. If, uh, under Obamacare especially, there's now this national database of medical records. So I would expect so. Uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments that not only did I have my son not taking the new AMPS test, he was also no longer taking the AIMS reading test. And uh, my son is also in an immersion program, and the district is now trying to get uh, standardized testing for the language. So if your um, student is also in um, an immersion program, I'd start watching out for the test they're trying to administer for them. I know that they're trying to make a Russian one this year, and this year they're doing the Japanese one, and my son won't be taking any of them. Thank you. So there's a gentleman over there. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I believe that the um, federal control of education is one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto. Yes. Uh, why is this not mentioned more often, or is it too radical? Probably for that reason, but you're exactly right. And I've been reading some books written back in the 60s and 70s, and they sound like exactly what's going on here. These books are describing the communist infiltration of America. And written by some reputable people. In fact, there's a quote by the former director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation that talks about communist infiltration in education. It was in a testimony before U.S. Congress back in the 60s. Also, uh, Phyllis Schlafly, the Evil Forum, discussed almost identical things happening in the 70s and 80s. So this is a continuation. It's now on steroids or hyperdrive or overdrive, however you want to put that. Thank you. This is the amazing device that's Nathan McPherson, and he's volunteering his time because he cares. And we actually met at a David Barton uh, at, at the